Well, Junior, you got uh, got some more guys involved this this past week. What uh, what enabled you to, to get some more guys out there? Uh, I, first off, I think those guys deserve to get out there. Uh, Troy Ware, we wish we could have played more in week one. Um, he came back and had a good week of practice, and uh, we worked, we rewarded him with some with some more playing time. And on Saturday's game, he played pretty well for us when he did get in. Who else is uh, you know obviously you got Matt and Shane but but and Troy who else is playing well and sort of earning earning some chances out there? Uh, you know Dallas Burrows I thought he made some, a few plays last week. Um, hopefully we can get Chaz going a little bit. Um, so those those three guys would you know hopefully we can get DJ going here in, in weeks to come and, and ship and um, see where we go. Troy was talking about how frustrating it was for him knowing there was a competition for playing time and then he got hurt. Uh, in, in camp, uh, how, have you seen him kind of bounce back from that? And how did that kind of maybe hurt him in the pecking order a little bit? Um, I wouldn't say it really hurt him. I just think that, you know, when he was out, guys made plays. And and to Troy's credit, when he did come back, he came back and he practiced well. And obviously, you see what he's doing now, he made a few plays for us. You know, Spurbeck was a guy we heard a ton about through, through spring ball through the summer, but mm -hmm. hasn't really shown up yet in, in games. Is he not quite there? Or? He would have showed up if he was in bounds on that catch the other day. I wouldn't he? Yeah. Uh, no, but Th Thomas is Thomas is um, he's been spelling Shane. You know when t Shane does get tired, um, and he's practicing well. And when he does get in the game, he's doing his job. See, it seems like you guys are awfully close to getting that that breakthrough guy. I mean, it goes back to that downfield pass against you know Chaz, a little underthrown against Ole Miss, mm -hmm. catch for Spurbeck. I mean, if one of those, if Thomas makes that or if Chaz makes that, it seems like you know maybe the perception there in terms of depth and involvement kind of mm -hmm. changes. Yeah, and, and you know, like I said, these guys are they're, we're going to keep working at it each day, um, just like we do today. We're going to try again this weekend. We're going to try again the following week. Um, you know, we are a few inches off of making the big play and on a consistent basis, and you know, weeks to come, we'll be able to make those plays. How are you managing Chaz this week with him having to take some snaps on the defensive side of the ball? Um, I manage him just like he's a, like a receiver. You know, he's in the receiver room. Um, he's learning what we got going on this week, install wise. Um, and you know, you know, as an emergency, he's going. He's been taking some reps at at corner like he did today. Overall, the, the group as a whole, are they where you want them to be right now? Um, you know, I, I think you know we're making strides. You know, last week I think the best thing we did in Saturday's games, I thought they played hard, um, snap in and snap out. They played fast. They ran block well. And when their number was called, they did make some plays. How have you seen Chaz kind of respond to, to taking out another old role or whatnot? You see him running around with his orange <laughs> practice jersey and hanging out or whatnot. I know he's running around there with two jerseys on, isn't he? <laughs> Um, no, Chaz, Chaz is a team player, and, um, and you know, him and I have talked, and, and um, you know, he's, he's about the team, and whatever's best for the team, he'll do. I know, I know it's probably, probably better to ask him, but I don't think we're going you know, to get a chance to talk to him this week. So how, is it hard for him to pick up the defense? I mean, is it pretty similar to what they've done? Or? Uh, I don't think it's hard for him. I mean, you got to think Chaz came in as a DB here, and he's played a lot of, a lot of DB reps, a lot of DB snaps. So um, I think, you know, really receiver is him – is where he has to keep progressing, have to keep learning. You know, DB is a little second nature to him right now. Speaking of DBs, what, what do you see from uh, UConn? You know, DBs, I think they have one DB. It's pretty good. Yeah, they, you know, I think their DBs are pretty good. Um, you know, they got you know, the safety is pretty good player. Big physical. Um, he led, the, I want to say, tops in the team in tackles. You know, they got the veteran corner, um, Byron, uh, that plays the field. A long, rangy corner. Um, they keep a lot of things in front of them, in front of them and uh, they make a lot of tackles in space. We saw this happen last year with Matt a little bit too, where he wasn't quite as involved, and all of a sudden the coaches said, we, "We've got to get him the ball," and found ways to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Harsh kind of said that that was what happened last week a little bit. How, how do you, with a guy like that, you're trying to give him the ball down the field? How, how do you sort of force the issue there? Um, you know, whatever the you know the concept is, if we're going to try to get Matt the ball or Shane the ball or whoever the primary is, and depending on what the coverage gives us, and that we're going to take what they give us. How do you, you know, do you have to try to kind of force the issue with him a little bit because of what, what he's been able to do, how consistent he is, try to find ways to make sure he's getting the ball? I don't think we have to force the issue. I think we're going to take what the defense gives us. And, and Grant, last week, as you can see, spread the ball around not only just to um, receivers but to running backs and tight ends. So I don't think we force the issue. I just think we take what the defense gives us. Record-setting record day for the offense as a whole, I think, was like top five or six for mm -hmm. total yards. I mean, you feel like the offense as a whole is, is on track? Yeah, we're progressing, you know, and that's, that's the most important thing. We, you, know, we, you know, we did put up a lot of numbers stats-wise as far as yards, um, but, you know, we want more points on the scoreboard. Shane was saying that you guys, uh, the receiving group, was challenged after the Ole Miss game to, to make more out of the play than, mm -hmm. than what it's designed for. How would you evaluate how they did against Colorado State? 
I think, you know, there's a few plays where guys caught the ball and was able to run after the catch a little bit. Now we got to keep progressing, keep pushing that bar. Um, I want to make catches. I want to make plays. You know, I want to turn five-yard hitches into 60-yard games. You know, like Shane, he caught the seam ball um, you know, and ran it about 40, 40 yards down the field. I want him to score. And, and that's, that's the standard, and that's the bar we have set in that room. How dangerous is it when he only does have to make one or two guys miss and there is space you know, when, you know, when he gets it downfield? Well, I mean, that's always, um, you know, first it's explosive play, as we call it. But, I mean, that's always, a, that's always hurts a defense, you know, to be able to catch and turn something into a big game. It's a momentum changer. With Matt, um, I know you spoke, you know, you spoke highly about Matt ever since you've been here, but what, what's he truly like behind the scenes? I mean, everybody talks about how humble he is and how much he doesn't really care about receptions and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, is that really the case? You, you no, it, it, it really is the case. I mean, that dude is, um, he's, he's very impressive, you know, day in and day out in his, in his preparation, how he works. He comes in here, you won't even know he's in here watching film. He's that quiet of a guy. Um, when game, when the lights come on, I mean, he shows up every day. He's consistent. Um, he's a good leader for especially these young guys as far as setting the standard to the play in the position. And it's just setting the standard of being a Bronco. Do you guys do anything for him for uh, setting the passing Austin Pettis' record? Um, you know, we gave him a ball. But, you know, I, after he broke the record, you know, I said, hey, man, congratulations. And he just was like, all right, thank you. <laughs> and then shrugged it off. That, that's Matt. I don't even know if he said thank you. <laughs> right? But, no, he, you know, Matt, Matt sees the bigger picture here. You know, and Matt's all about, you know, being a team player and, and winning ball games. He, it's a, I, I guess how would you define Matt Miller? I mean, that's one thing that he literally always talks about is, is wins and losses, and that's how he kind of defines himself. How, how would you define Matt? He's blue collar. I mean, he really defines being blue collar. That's, that's the type of guy he is. I mean, you wouldn't even know he's in the building, like I said. I mean, he's, he's a, a silent assassin in a sense. He's, you know what I mean? He just goes to work and makes you know he has eight catches for 150 yards and a touchdown. You got a long Saturday the other day to, to, to watch some games, and you know a lot of these guys came from uh, like you came from somewhere else six eight months ago or whatever. Yes. Do, do you try to track those teams a little bit? Do you still kind of have some loyalties there? You want to see what's going on? Or? I mean, I think I think each and every one of us have came from a place, you know, here all of us on the staff, and I think naturally we we all tend to um, follow the team, the place that we just left, and see how they do and root for them and. You know, I got a chance, you know, Sanford, for example, was watching Stanford SC game. <laughs> you know, the Arkansas State guys were watching Arkansas State, Tennessee, you know, and I was watching the Eastern Washington <laughs> University of Washington game. So, um, you know, it's always good to see those guys. You know, we root for them, and, and it's always good to see those guys, you know, having success. Huff and Avalos were just bored and nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, obviously, right now. <laughs> no, I, you know, th those guys, you know, they root for those Husky guys. I mean, they always, I mean, those, I think, I think, you know, the most important thing, those are our friends. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And we always want to see our friends do good, you know, have success. One more, one more about Matt. I mean, um, to have a guy like, uh, to have a guy like that is a leader that doesn't really do much or, or, you know, doesn't really say much. I mean, how does he kind of still influence the rest of those, those guys? And, and uh, do you guys ever, do you, I mean, as a coach, do you point to any of his records and say, like, this is what you can't achieve if you go about it like this? I think Matt, the best thing Matt does is he leads by example. And, you know, a lot of leaders now are lead by example leaders instead of vocal leaders. Um, I do lean on him a lot, that's for sure. And he's helped me out a lot since I've been here. You know, I, I don't, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I have all the answers. And Matt, is as respectful as he is, will come in and we'll talk about a lot of things on Monday when we're doing game plan prep. Thank you.